Hello, I'm Jamie Machek with the Wisconsin Valley Library Service and welcome to our Digital Byte. For the Byte this week, we're going to talk about how to set up a doodle poll. Many of you have probably completed a doodle poll, either for a meeting or maybe someone, a colleague needed, a, needed an opinion on something and they use doodle as a method to do that. So we're gonna talk this week about setting that up. We're gonna to go to the Doodle website in just a bit and set that up live. Um, but before we do that, there are three things I wanna talk about very quickly that I'd like you to keep in mind when you're setting up a poll. The first thing you wanna do is pick enough dates. We are all very busy in library land and you would be surprised how full people's calendars are. I've arranged probably <clears throat> over 50 Doodle polls <laughs> in my life, sometimes with two or three other people, sometimes with 10, 15 other people. And I always think I select enough dates and times in the polls and a lot of times I don't. So pick more dates than you think. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. You also wanna give a deadline for completing the poll. So you wanna give people enough time uh, when you send the link out uh, to your poll for them to complete. You know, you, you ideally you want to give people a few days, maybe a week, but you want to also give a deadline. So you want to say, please complete this poll by the end of the day next Friday and give a date. Be very definitive with that so people know when they want you to complete the poll and they have a deadline for themselves. You also want to get back to people, usually a day or two after that deadline. You don't want to leave people hanging because by that time, those dates that people might have been open might not be open anymore. So be very um, mindful about getting back to people um, quickly when you have a date set for a poll. So the reason you'd want to set up a doodle poll or something similar to it online is that it will avoid tons of emails being exchanged back and forth and back and forth. This is an easy way to get people's opinions on when they'd like to meet. So right now I have the Doodle site pulled up. It is doodle.com, it's that easy. I do not have an account um, with Doodle. When I create a poll, I just do it as a guest. Uh, I don't think it costs anything to log in. You probably could track your polls on the website. However, I feel like I can do this just as easily through the emails I get um, from Doodle. Uh, so I don't have a login and it's, it's one fewer login that I don't need to remember. So when you get to the home page, it's going to ask you what, what the occasion is. So let, let's say I wanna set up a, a meeting, a staff meeting um, for the month of June. So I'm gonna go ahead and type June staff meeting and then I'm going to click on create a doodle poll. It's going to take me to a page that looks like this. This is the title. Um, if you wanna add um, a meeting room option, you can. Um, if it was online, you could say online. And then if you wanna add another note, uh, you can do that as well. Okay, so now that I have that in there, I'm gonna go ahead and click the green continue button. And then it's going to pull up a screen that looks like this. What are the options? And here is where I'm going to choose my dates and times where I would possibly want to meet. So let's go ahead to the month of June since I wanna set up a June staff meeting. And I would probably look at my own calendar first to make sure I'm available. Uh, I don't wanna choose dates um, and, and cause that kind of chaos. So I'm just going to randomly, for the sake of this uh, digital byte, I'm going to go ahead and just choose a bunch of dates. And here, okay, so I have the dates chosen. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and add time. So I'm going to click on the add times button. And let's say that the staff meeting is typically an hour. So I'm going to start adding some times. So I click 9 a.m. I'm gonna click an end time of 10 a.m. Um, let's say I wanna add more times. So I'm gonna do an 11 a.m. I just hit 11 and up popped 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, let's add two o'clock as well. I don't want two a.m. So for June 4th, I chose three dates. 
I could leave it like this, and that means all three days would be an option for the dates I have chosen. It asks me right here, do I want different times for each day? And yes, I do. So let's say June 4th, um, I can meet the three days that I chose, but I can't do that for June 5th. On June 5th, I can only meet from nine to 10. So I'm gonna click need different times for each day. And then where it says for June 5th, I'm simply going to delete the two o'clock time. Oh, got ahead of me. The two o'clock time and the 11 o'clock time. So now, as you can see, for June 5th, it only gives one option for a time. Um, let's say on June 6th, on Wednesday, I also could do a three to four. So I'm gonna add a three o'clock time. I don't want 3 a.m. <laughs> uh, that would be interesting. All right, let's add the 3 p.m. to four o'clock. So you can vary your dates and times as much as you'd like. I'm gonna go ahead now and click on this settings button. I usually don't use this, but I'm gonna show you what it does. You can choose any of these options if you'd like. Um, you can check if you want people to indicate um, that the option is not ideal for them. You could have a first come first serve that once spots are filled, nobody else can take part in the, in the poll. You could also limit participants to a single vote or you could allow people to hide their names and comments. Most of the stuff that I'm setting up in the library is a meeting and I usually don't need to check any of these, so I just leave it at that. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the screen we were just on. My days and times are chosen, that's all I need, so I'm gonna go ahead and click to continue. You wanna make sure then you fill out this part, step three of three. Um, I'm gonna add my last name here and my email address. The email address you choose is the one where all of the poll information is going to go to. Um, so make sure you have your correct email address. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead and click finish. And now it gives me the link to the poll. I can do two things now to get the link out to my um, people that I wanna send it to. I can email it through Doodle. However, 100% of the time, I choose to copy this link and send it in an email. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna click copy, and it's going to copy that participation link for me. Okay, so I started composing an email and just started to write, please complete the doodle poll by 5 p.m. on Friday for setting up our June staff meeting. Now, because I copied that participation link, I'm just going to simply hit paste, and there's the link and I can send this uh, to whoever I want to complete the poll. So as the manager of this poll, the June staff meeting, I'm also going to get an email from Doodle that looks like this. And it comes from Doodle and it says that you're one step closer to find the best time for your Doodle poll. And it gives me a button that says manage my poll. So this is unique to me. And as the manager of the poll, I can see who has completed it. And there it is. Right now, nobody has participated, but if I were to be a participant, I would complete my name. I would check the boxes as to when I could attend, and then I would click send. So once you share your poll, you're going to start getting email notifications that people have participated in your poll. So if you look at my email on the screen, I received a message where it says, hi, Jamie. Ann Hamlin just participated in the Doodle Poll June staff meeting. So if I want, I can go ahead and go to the poll because I'm curious what Ann chose as uh, her dates for the staff meeting. So now when I look at the poll, it will show not just the dates that I selected, but the dates that Ann selected too. And in turn, that can help me figure out um, when the best date might be for doing the poll or doing the meeting because of the poll. So what I do to stay organized when I have people who are completing the poll and just to keep myself on task is I have um, a doodle poll folder in my email. There it is right there. And every time I get a new response or let's say I'm creating you know, more than one poll at a time, uh, I can simply just dump those emails in that folder and I can keep myself on task. 
Okay, so let's say your poll deadline date is here. You want to close the poll and notify the participants of when the meeting date is. So what I can do then is in any of the emails, I can choose the final option. It will take me again to my poll in the Doodle page, the staff meeting, and I'm going to click on choose final option. And it's saying, go ahead, once the votes are in, go ahead and close the poll. You can then let everybody know the result. I'm going to choose June 4th from 11 to 12. I'm going to go ahead and click done. And it's going to bring up a screen um, where it says I can have a link to notify everybody that the poll is closed. What I typically do, though, is just email people a separate email and let them know the date. Um, I don't want um, emails from Doodle possibly going into people's spam accounts. So I usually don't use this option. Um, however, it is a way to close the poll. So that completes this digital byte on setting up a Doodle poll. As I mentioned, Doodle is easy, it's convenient, it can make things like setting up meetings um, a lot easier when you have a larger group of people. So I hope you enjoyed this digital byte on setting up a Doodle poll. Have a great rest of your day and so long.